Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Well This Morning, your very own show that you, of course, get to see every other morning whenever you do tune into TV. With me, I happen to have, well, my very favorite, the energy quotient of the show, thank Shazad you, Khan, and I am Shaza Hashmi. How are you, Shazad? I'm absolutely perfect. I would refer to you as uh, in, in the same words which you've used for me as well, because we totally believe in each other, and of that's course. something which, ladies and gentlemen, has actually uh, made us be where we are today. Alhamdulillah, I'm very thankful to Allah Almighty for blessing me with such amazing teammates and team members. Uh, what a hardworking producer and executive producer we have on the shows, and, you know, the cameramen over here, people in the MCR. And I always want to kind of, uh, you know, give them these amazing messages so that they kind of <laughs> keep up with the kind of dedication they show towards the show as well. And this is something which is very important. This is the most pivotal element of anything you do in life, ladies and gentlemen, and that is to be dedicated, to be passionate, and to kind of, uh, you know, having this space within your own self that, you know, okay, you know, I'm going to learn something new mm. today. And or you'll obviously have a beautiful life. But other than that, you know, other than beautiful life, we have a beautiful weather down here in oh, Islamabad. Wow. You know, today when I was driving towards work, I was like, Allah Mia, thank you very much for, uh, you know, giving us this chance to live in this wonderful, the second best capital of the world, Islamabad. And, you know, gratitude, Shiza, uh, mm -hmm. actually helps me quite a lot to understand where we are in life, alhamdulillah. And, you know, there's a reason because a lot of times, you know, you come across people who are like, okay, you know, this is not going my way. This is not going my way. I so wanted to do this and whatnot. But believe me, you know, in life, not everything will be your way. You really need Absolutely. to have this patience within you as well because patience, I believe, is talent. And, you know, when we talk about patience, obviously for everybody, who's going goat purchasing these days as well. <laughs> I think they need a lot of patience as well. What about you? Have you uh, participated? Yes. Is your husband out there, you know, looking for goats uh, already? Uh, have well, you luckily, <laughs> because me and my husband do live away from his hometown. So my father-in-law actually did all the buying Mashallah. and managing all that. Thank you for doing that, uncle. Uh, also, I feel like Shazad, because of the kind of weather that we're going through, Alhamdulillah, for today. But other than that, we are reaching 47 degrees, even 45 in Islamabad for that matter. It's yeah. insanely hot. And in that weather, first of all, I do feel extremely bad for the animals that are continuously standing out there in the Mondays. I get it. I mean, at this period of time they're supposed to be there but i really i really wish or rather pray to allah ta'ala that he makes it easier for the people who are buying and for the animals themselves because well the kind of heat it is well other than that again shazad uh, we are really absolutely blessed to be living in a place which is like you said so stunning you said it's the second uh, prettiest or the best capital of yes. the world for me it is the only best capital wow. or the city wow. of the world wow. it is definitely so so you tell me um, you've been uh, celebrating Eid in Islamabad always yes no, how no, not, how not is really. it I mean because it's, it's an urban setting right yeah, how do yeah, yeah. I mean, it's great, but, you know, we obviously had our ancestors' place in uh, Rawalpindi, and, you know, we used to go over there. My grandfather, my uncles, chachus, chachis, cousins, everybody used to be there. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, since my grandparents left, obviously everybody moved out. Everybody needed to have that space to themselves. The families were getting bigger. Mm -hmm. So the first day, obviously, uh, is going to be at home. Okay. And then, you know, towards the end of the, uh, of the first day, you know, we'll go towards our Api's place and, you know, dinner and whatnot, which... Obviously, makes me think about it that, it, you know, it's a beautiful reunion and, you know, Allah it gives is. us this opportunity twice a year to kind of come together, no matter what hardships what you one is going through, whenever it's Eid, you kind of settle yourself, you relax yourself, you get to see your support system, you sit down with them, have a conversation and it will obviously bring out beautiful memories and memories do last forever. This is one thing, you know, whether good or bad, memories do last forever and I do not want people to kind of think about the bad ones, but cherish on the ones which are the most beautiful ones and today that's exactly what we are doing we're actually going to cherish a memory which we created which we had Allah gave us the opportunity three or four years ago mm -hmm. when we were joined by a wonderful human being who's actually studied Urdu who studied uh, different languages ladies and gentlemen he even knows Pashto and you know he was dedicated to it he served in Melbourne he served in Sri Lanka he served in Afghanistan he served in Pakistan as well and after three or four years, he kind of had this wish to be back on the show, which we were so uh, respectful. You happy know, to we, we were so happy to kind of oblige to that uh, request that he's over here with us and he will be talking about Japan today, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be talking with the people of Japan because I've seen them that, you know, the, that the people of Japan are the most resilient people all over the globe. And, you know, imagine that when the earthquake even struck, you know, they were back on pace, they were back on track, you know, within no time as well, within one year or six, six months time, 
they were back on track and people over there because our producer actually went to japan as well hmm. and he had so many good to, things to say so we wanted to talk about the culture of japan today yeah. and that too with somebody who happens to be a japanese but knows urdu pashto and a lot more other <laughs> languages as well and he's done degrees in it yeah yeah I mean that is uh, ins insane actually yeah. to know all these because she's had to be honest living in Pakistan I don't even know Pashto so this is definitely But I do great. know a little bit you know uh, Yeah few words I don't know Tasira Kumde chadta hai dode okhre wo bolte hai you know dantake na you know so so I can uh, have a conversation but people do catch me with my accent they know even mm. though that my last name says Khan and you know just yesterday this scam. is you know, this joking. is very interesting you know just yesterday somebody called me and his accent was very pashtoon as well and all of a sudden he goes like um uh, sake uh, you know something like that uh, i'm sorry you know if somebody is actually going to take offense of that but i was trying to replicate of what he said and then i was like no sir but uh, i know a little bit of us he, he was like you know you your last name is khan then i felt so shit i was like okay you know even if i'm not pathan you know but you i should do have, have my name as khan as well and that's from the family does it mean that you know that i've put that name out there you know but you know that was a different <laughs> part right. of conversation but today ladies and gentlemen we're going to be in conversation with this humble amazing beautiful being he's over here in the studios with us he happens to be the deputy consul general and the, from the consul general in Karachi of Japan as well his excellency miss mr ashida katsunuri hello assalamu alaikum good morning wa alaikum assalam how are you oh hi good morning yeah oh hi good morning it's very <laughs> nice meeting again yeah uh, mr shizan and uh, ashida san uh, it's very pleasure for me to be here again because uh, last time I really, really enjoyed your program, but uh, fortunately I got the chance to come here again. I'm very happy to be wow. here. And it's uh, our pleasure to actually and it's host likewise. you. And you know what, just yesterday I was actually thinking to get something for Eid as well, you know, and now uh, after kind mm -hmm. of meeting you, you were wearing a really nice outfit, you know, waistcoat and the kurta. Where did you get your hands on to it as well? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, uh, I got it in uh, Lahore. Wow. Uh, I w visited uh, Lahore uh, almost 10 years back. I visited uh, uh, the shop of bride and bridegroom. Yeah. And I got it. <laughs> uh, actually, this dress is for bridegroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a bridegroom here, but uh, it's all I'm right. very much uh, uh, like Shawar Kamis, especially uh, West Coast is very nice. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So, so you're already a family of three, Alhamdulillah. So when you actually were wearing this dress today, did your wife say something? <laughs> hey, you know what? Where are you going? Please stop for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I always uh, wear uh, a <laughs> Japanese dress, uh, wow. kimono, but. Today, you, you know, Eid al Azza is coming. That's why I select this costume. Wow. Uh, this occasion. And that's wonderful. That's very, that's very kind of you as well, I want to say, of course, to uh, respect the culture. I want you to draw uh, not necessarily a comparison, but maybe what are some of the similarities that you have found in Japanese and Pakistani culture? Mm. Uh, Japan is located, as you know, uh, in a part of Asia. Yeah. Far, far east, yeah. uh, uh, far, far east geographically, but uh, we have a very similarity. Especially, I have to say the uh, concept about family, hmm. because uh, now my wife is with me, but uh, previously I uh, was alone. Yeah. Just because my wife has to take care of her mother. Okay. I was asked why you were alone here. I always answered because my wife is uh, busy for take caring her mother. Hmm. Then uh, every time people appreciate uh, this action and uh, people say our culture, you know, the Pakistani culture is very similar to Japan. Uh, and from the this answer, hmm. I always feel the basic concept of family is very similar to yeah. each other. Hmm, definitely, and we do agree with that. I think the core values, uh, the collectivistic culture is definitely similar, which is why we as Pakistanis absolutely love learning more about Japan and yeah. just, you know, sort of uh, exposing ourselves to their media content or even, uh, well, cultural uh, aspects of that matter. So I think I'm going to take the moment to actually request you, please, mm -hmm. to share something in Urdu with our audiences, anything about Pakistan, mm -hmm or probably your experiences <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um, as you know uh, last time also i yeah. uh, sang a song yeah, yeah i sang oh uh, you want to sing again yeah, please yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
but but uh, which song is uh, suitable this uh, occasion? I mean, whichever yeah. Pakistani song you want to sing, you know, uh, it's, it's uh, totally your choice. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, last time I sang uh, Harzum, maybe yes. in Urdu. Yes. So this time, uh, uh, Pashtu. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, but love it. Ve very little. Yeah. Okay. La chape khwar ta kamiz tol ma la la vla ta zaka za guru na dress talol ma la la vla la chape khwar ta kamiz tol ma la la vla ta zaka za guru na dress talol ma la la vla ta zaka za guru na dress talol ma la la vla wow that's very nice. wonderful and that's so super yeah. and you know absolutely it, amazing we get so excited when we actually hear uh, you know our national languages from the people who are actually not from Pakistan as well but eventually I think you've so much blended in, you know, because for mm. the last 10 or 14 years you've been in Pakistan, if I'm not wrong, right? Mm -hmm. Now, which is why, you know, I want to kind of take it further and, you know, we want to learn from you today because every single day when we step out of our houses, this is one thing which we are expecting a lot. Mm. You know, talking about Japan is one of those nations which is highly developed, you know, they make sure that, you know, that the country, people within even Japan, I mean, there's this one more interesting fact which I want to share at this point of time, and that is that Japan happens to be one of those countries which actually find banks to have a certain amount of money in their accounts so and they find them because they're not actually giving them as loans to people so that they can have their own businesses which i believe is a wonderful initiative as well how do you think that any nation can be at par with japan you know because when we talk about technology when hmm. we talk about information technology in in every aspect in every walk of life japan has always made sure to be at the top how did you guys achieve that this is one thing i want our people to know as well Mm. Yeah, uh, the most important thing is, of course, uh, education, because uh, uh, the literature literacy of Japan is almost hundred yeah. percent. Wow! So uh, even though uh, in a, a very poor family can uh, join the, the school okay. up to nine degree, uh, ninth degree. Okay. That's why you can say a. Every everybody can read and uh, write uh, our ma mother tongue Japanese. Wow. That is a w very important one of the most important things. And the other is uh, the culture. Y as you know, we are very much punctual, and punctuality is very important thing because even though we have uh, many programs uh, scheduled. Uh, uh, today, uh, for example, today I came here yeah. at uh, 8.30. Yeah. I was told you should come at uh, 8.30. Yeah. And I came here around uh, 8.25. Wonderful. Oh this wow. is our culture. Wow. Wow. If we say uh, the exact time we should come, uh, five minutes or ten minutes <laughs> prior. I know where it's coming <laughs> from. Yeah. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, uh, the second thing, I, I think. Yeah. Of course, uh, I have uh, a lot of uh, things to uh, explain you, but uh, so far, I, two things occur Education to me. and being punctual as well. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and this is something uh, which, which I'm going to kind of agree to 100% or mm. probably 200%. Because these are the two things, Shiza, which I've seen in my family as well, that, you know, my mother always made sure that, you know, no matter what happens, how sick we were, we were always sent to school, yeah. you know, and, you know, our father uh, always used to make sure that we are on time, even though that our father wasn't that punctual. <laughs> Sorry, Abu, if you're watching the show as well, uh, b because he was a banker and, you know, he kind of had flexible hours to himself. But, uh, you know, whenever it was down to us going to school, you know, we were almost very little late, uh, you know, just because mm -hmm. of the fact that father was dropping us. But, you know, after... You know, our driver came in, you know, mm -hmm. Babaji came in, you know, Babaji always ma used to make sure that everybody reaches uh, school in time as well. And not just that, you know, about punctuality, Shiza, I think that me and you, we've never ever, I mean, hardly probably one day or two days in our, in my nine years of PTV world and, you know, your three or four years of PTV world that we have been late from work. You know, this is one thing which actually kind of came to us, you know, because of the fact that my father wasn't really always very supportive of us not going to school you know yeah, so he would always make sure that you know school nobody can miss school so which is why you know now they've always emphasized that okay work you have to be at work no matter what happens and that's the kind of uh, that's the kind of nurture attitude, nurturing that's yes. the kind of attitude you actually want from your family hmm. only then you are actually going to practice these values uh, definitely i totally agree with you and these are some of the virtues that develop and in 
an amazing personality, and I want everyone to have that. So I think we should all learn wherever we can. And but, but before you actually I, ask a question, okay. uh, His Excellency, what I wanted to ask was, since you uh, spoke about punctuality and, you know, since you've been over here in Pakistan for the longest period of time, Alhamdulillah, you know, every wedding card you're going to get, you know, <laughs> dinners at 8.30, people start to show up at 9.30 mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Is it, is that the reason why you actually spoke about it as well, that, you know, we're not very much on time? No, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yes, <laughs> yes and no. Actually, uh, as you mentioned, uh, when I came here as, as first time in 1993, yeah. I was uh, invited in a wedding ceremony, wedding yeah. party. Yeah. It was said uh, it start 8 p.m. sharply. Yeah. I came there, uh, I arrived there uh, at 7.45. 8, 8. Okay. Eight. But it start, it start around 10. <laughs> Mm. It was amazing. Uh, yeah, but uh, at the same time, I have to say, uh, yes, Japanese people are very punctual and uh, always uh, prepared for some program. Yeah. For example, if I participate in uh, some program, in TV program, yeah. then mm -hmm. I prepare uh, something for uh, uh, if this question is uh, <laughs> uh, so, what did you prepare for today? Okay, uh, <laughs> yeah. Let but, us but be honest. Yeah. What I what I what I what I want to say is uh, mm -hmm. this is sort of a weakness because uh, Pakistani people are very good at improvisation. Okay. Even though without any preparation, maybe <laughs> you, <will> improvise. <laughs> you you all uh, can do everything without <laughs> any preparation. This is a uh, uh, very good things for uh, Pakistan. Well, wow. I think it's so an attribute. I'm exactly, it's a compliment. <laughs> Thank you, Shazad. But, uh, but, you know, I want to add a way, which okay. is why, sir, you know, I'm going to mention this uh, to you as well, that, you know, for, from a lot of rural areas, hmm. a lot of Pakistanis travel abroad and they live there. So imagine that, you know, for somebody who might have left Pakistan in 2015, now when we're going to call him back, he'll be like, okay, I have three petrol stations, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. So, you know, in... I think that, you know, that I'm going to 100% agree with what you said, that we're good at improvising. So whatever it's situation we have at hand, we're going to make sure that the other person does not get offended in the first place, mm. that he goes back happy. We maintain hospitality. And number four, you know, whatever we can do in our capacity best, we will make sure to do so as well. But thank you very much for such <laughs> a wonderful compliment. I believe that's I think, wonderful. Yeah, definitely. It's a good attribute. But now, you know, Pakistan absolutely loves its ties with Japan. It's been a friendly relationship. They want to continue that. And they're always reiterating upon the fact that we need to improve bilateral ties. Like lately, we're working on defense together. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the avenues that we think you think we have yet to discover together? Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, we have a very long and very deep, good uh, friendship uh, mm. since w our relationship was uh, uh, started yes. in uh, 1952. Okay. And uh, uh, actually, uh, next year, 2012, is uh, uh, 2022 is the yeah. 70th <laughs> anniversary yeah. for our diplomatic relation. Okay. Wow. And uh, our friendship was uh, uh, very e remarkable when we that this time has started because mm -hmm. at that time in 1952 Japan faced a very difficulty after the uh, defeated uh, in uh, yes. World War Two. Yes. Uh, our position was uh, very much a, a worse than uh, Pakistan was. Right. That is why we get many assistance from Pakistan. In, in terms of uh, the business, especially at uh, that time, textile was the uh, uh, key industries in Japan, and Pakistani people, uh, Pakistani businessmen, cooperated with us mm. for the exporting uh, cotton, because uh, we had we faced uh, so much uh, restriction uh, for the business. Okay. But at that time, Pakistan was maybe the only country that exported the cotton for us. No. That is uh, our. Uh, what do you say? I gratitude oh. very much, uh, still. Marshall. And gradually, our position was uh, getting better and better. And uh, nowadays, uh, we are always uh, uh, cooperative for uh, Pakistani people, e even though, uh, you know, some uh, natural disaster uh, hmm. uh, occurred. We always uh, came here for the cooperation uh, as uh, soon as possible. That, you know, our relation is uh, always uh, very good. And we faced uh, some difficulties, but very uh, 
very, very small, smaller than uh, we enjoyed. Really. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. And thank you very much for saying that as well. But sir, very quickly, I wanted to ask a technical question. And I was never able to actually uh, ask this question from anybody because Japan's economy truly depends on a lot of exports as well. And, uh, you know, this is one thing because I just very recently ventured into business and, you know, the best of the cars we actually kind of import from Japan as well. And, you know, there's an auction process and whatnot. And what we feel great about is that obviously, you know, you, you exchange one Pakistani. In fact, you, if, if you're going to give two Pakistani rupees, we're going to get 1.45. You know, that's, that's how we actually get the exchange of yen as well. So the currency, you've always maintained it to, to a level where it is very easy for anybody to kind of import anything from Japan. And this is that area where I think a lot of countries can learn from Japan as well. So how have you maintained that economy in the first place? where you actually are rated amongst the top of top countries in the world as well. Not just that, you know, at the same time you have, uh, you know, your currency rates are too low that, you know, even if we are to kind of import anything from Japan, mm -hmm. it is even easier for Pakistanis to do so. So how did you do that? Mm. Yeah, uh, when I came here in 1993, uh, one, uh, one dollar was around 35. 32, 33 uh, Pakistani yeah. rupees, yeah. Yeah. but now <laughs> one is uh, yeah. 60. Yeah, uh, it's a b very much difference. Yeah. And uh, in terms of Japanese currency yen, almost same as for uh, 30 years, 40 years. Uh, just because uh, we have a very strong uh, industry, especially as you mentioned, uh, automobile is uh, yeah. one of the pillar of our industries. And still, uh, of course, uh, many rivals are uh, appeared, <laughs> but uh, still <laughs> we have a very good position. Yes, of course. And uh, uh, inshallah, in the future as well. So industry, especially uh, making something, mm -hmm. is very important. Exactly. But, you know, Pakistan has also, uh, also very good things in terms of uh, agriculture. You, you have uh, very nice mangoes. I always, <laughs> I, I, I always uh, enjoy mango the, every morning, especially my wife is uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, founder of uh, mango. Very well. mm. So, but uh, the utilization of s such uh, resources is uh, uh, n n not perfect in Pakistan so Sorry. far. So if you have to, uh, if you want to uh, develop, you have to consider about how to use these uh, resources. Exactly. That is the, the most important thing. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely yeah. agreed with you. And, and you know, we kind of keep on reiterating about that as well, how technological interventions need to be within the agriculture sector. And inshallah, you know, we, we're moving in the right direction and with friends like you in Japan and China and you know, other countries as well, we, we are grateful that we will be inshallah making these changes and in days to come, Pakistan's economy is going to kind of be up there as well where we want it to be because Prime Minister Imran Khan has worked day in, day out. And now, alhamdulillah, we're actually out getting out of that trouble We're as seeing well. it already exactly, in Exactly, alhamdulillah. Right. So now, sir, towards the end of this segment, you know, first of all, I want you to give out a message to everybody who's out there. And then I'm going to request you once again if you can sing uh, Sahil Pe Khade Ho To. <laughs> yeah, by Sajad Ali. It's a wonderful song as well. And when he was here last time, because that's uh, the memory we wanted to cherish. So please give us the opportunity to cherish that memory as well. Uh, is this the only selection of the <laughs> song? Uh, uh, Sahil Sahil Sahil? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'd like to uh, propose you the another song. Sure, why okay. not? Why yeah. not? Why <laughs> whatever you feel so like. Uh, yes. Uh, खुशी के कर्मों का सामना करना या मौका है इसलिए हाँ सॉरी इट्स हाई स्पीकिंग लाल मेली पत्तू लकियो बरा जोले लालन सिंदूरी दास से वरदान सही शाबाज करंदर दमादम मस्त करंदर अली दा पहला नंबर अली दा पहला नंबर होलार मेरी होलार मेरी Wow, 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 that was, that was beautiful. And so towards the end, anything you want to share with our audiences, people out there in Japan, because we're going out in 46 different countries, anything you want to say? Okay, I always uh, uh, mentioned about the three uh, message or message from Baba uh, Ekom, uh, Muhammad Ali Zina. Yes. Uh, they left very nice message, very good, excellent message. Hmm. Three good things, three important things. 
اتحاد يعني اي مين يونيتي يونيتي فيث اند ديسيبلين يس these three, three things are uh, as you know we have <laughs> japan it <laughs> japan <laughs> has exactly. that is why we could we could uh, uh, develop that's why i'd like to uh, say these uh, i'd like to give you three uh, three three words mm -hmm. for pakistani people sure. yeah. these three words are very important for you oh well, that's wonderful thank you very much your excellency mr ashuda uh, katsunuri ladies and gentlemen all the way from karachi he made sure that he's going to come back to our show as well we were privileged we were honored so thank you very much for taking our time and ladies and gentlemen as he said the unity faith discipline are these three things are actually going to take way further ahead as well and this is something which we're going to build up on you know in terms of business when we come down to business we have so much of competition that there's hardly any unity to be seen can we <laughs> do that that's something which we'll be talking All about right. in the next segment don't go anywhere we'll be right back good morning ohio gonzalez <laughs> stay tuned
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back and thank you very much for staying tuned to Pete Who while you're watching World This Morning alongside Ms. Shiza Hashmi and I happen to be Shazad Hassan Khan. It is a Monday morning and I was so confused today because, you know, from tomorrow onwards, obviously, you know, we will be preparing for Eid and special shows and whatnot. So I thought to myself that, okay, you know, it might be Friday, but it's not. I was thinking you know, it's Friday. Oh, God. You know, the weather is great outside, you know, please make sure that you take our time and go out there as well. And, you know, before actually heading out towards a short break, you know, His Excellency actually said, hmm. uh, you know, in fact, he kind of revised the words or the message which was given to us by the father of our nation, Qaeda Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah. That was unity, faith, and discipline. And this is something which we do lack in. I'm sorry to say that. Okay. I'm not going to say that we lack in faith. I'm not going to... But, yeah, obviously, the rest too. Discipline, do, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> we, we do lack in it as well because he spoke about punctuality. I know, we all know, you know how punctual we are. In fact, you know, the majority of the people who are very punctual, there are a lot of people who are not really very punctual as well. But when it comes down to unity, I've seen this one thing that, you know, wherever I've been outside Pakistan, I've seen Bangladeshi being, uh, you know, together you know, on one page, on one platform. I've seen a lot of people from different nationalities helping each other. Rather, there's one thing which I've kind of not felt great about, and that is that wherever there are two Pakistanis, three Pakistanis working at the same place, they're pulling each other's legs. Why? And, and you know, this is something which, I, I mean, I don't know. They have this thing in their mind that, okay, you know, if I'm going to pull his leg, probably I can get to his position. If mm. I'm going to get to his position, let's start pulling somebody else's leg as well. And it's the mentality. Yeah, we really need to get rid of this culture because if in businesses, this is something which I've done myself, Alhamdulillah, for the last 10, 11 years, Shiza, mm. that if there has been a youngster, you've done it too as well. You know, he wants to be a part of a television channel. They want to do something in media. We've I always tried. made sure that we promote. Yes. You know, and even if there's a show which I cannot do, I will probably promote Shiza. You know, yeah. I'll be like, okay, you know, if I cannot do it, Shiza will do it as mm. well. You know, things like that. So I think that we really need to promote this culture because whatever risk you are going to get, ladies and gentlemen, it's from Allah. Nobody can take it away from you. So start believing in it. Absolutely. Uh, Shasat, I stand by everything you said. Well, let's talk about it, you know, first of all, yep. this attitude and how to actually have the right kind of mentality for running a business. Because when we did go out to a short break, this is yep. what you said we're going to talk about. Uh, here's a fact, and it's a really unfortunate one. While, of course, there's, a, there's now a massive ease of business in uh, Pakistan and, you know, the environment is really conducive for anyone to actually start whatever they want, still about 70-ish percent of all the new starts up go down. And well, of course, they cannot sustain over a period of few months and then probably even maximum two years for that matter. Yeah. That is it. I want for everyone out there who has had the courage, the resources, the time, the hard work and the effort to start something up on their own, I want them today to, well, stay tuned to this segment because they're going to find out a lot of healthy tips on how to run a successful and a sustainable yeah, business. Because there are two reasons which I've figured out ever since I've ventured into business. Number one, uh, you know, we're not trained in a way where we're very used to of uh, losses. You know, this is something which I want everybody mm. to understand. You know, we, we take an initiative, we unfortunately, you know, whatever program it was, we lose a little bit of money and then we give it, give it up. You know, mm. this is not how it is. You know, once a very amazing layman told me that, you know, son, you know, this is one thing which, that, which we have been taught all our lives that, you know, even if it's a loss, it's business, one day you're going to come back to an avenue where you're going to recover it all. And this, that does happen. So obviously you need to stay by it. Not just that, you know, there's, okay, there are three reasons. Number two, the reason is, that what happens is that, you know, whenever we're venturing into business, they say that, you know, that the newer ideas or uh -huh. people who actually innovate are globally only one or two percent. The rest of the people have to replicate the idea. They have to adopt the idea. But what they do is that they kind of miss one thing or two in all of that business cycle, which is why, you know, they kind of do not get around as well. Number three is that, uh, you know, just because of family pressure, we do not shut a business just because of the fact that log kya kahenge. Please come on, you know, it's, uh, you know, they were not there to support you. They were not there to pay your bills. And even now, you know, if I'm going to open up something which has to do with apparel, I will have a lot of requests from my friends. They are, mujhe ek track suit bej do, mujhe bej do. And yeah, I mean, come on, yeah, you need to support your businesses. As Definitely. soon as Apple announces they're going to release a new phone, everybody's going to queue outside the Apple store. Why? Because they want a new cell phone. Please, <laughs> hey, you know what? You're going to pay for it. Ask and kind of, you know, uh, dedicate yourself towards your friends doing businesses. Definitely. Purchase from them as well and then help them spread the word. Which is why, you know, we have uh, business experts over here in the studios with us who've gone through all of these phases of life, ladies and gentlemen, and they happen to be business coaches, business experts, and they're doing some wonderful job as well. Ladies and gentlemen, first up, we have a business consultant. She happens to be Ms. Noreen Ghaffar. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Good morning. Wa Alaikum Assalam. How Thank are you, you business lady? 
Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful to have you over here. And not just that, long stay here, ladies and gentlemen. We're lucky that we've actually been joined by business coach and a professor at the university as well. She is Miss Javeria Shabir. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Good morning. Assalamu Alaikum. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> Wonderful to have you. So let's get the conversation started. What are the things which we do incorrectly whenever we are starting a startup? I'll and start it's with only appropriate to ask you because you also head the women's wing in the Rahul Pani Chamber of Commerce yeah. and Industry. Thank you very much. Uh, I would continue with, because I'm also Mehman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wonderful. So you can well imagine, uh, it's uh, business is in our blood. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what I have witnessed till for the last, uh, how many years, I'm engaged in this work Five, since 2004. Four. Wow. Yeah. Mashallah. So because I have always had the flair to start up my own business. I started my business like six years back. Yeah, that's what I was remembering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good memory. <Yeah. laughs> so, uh, but I used to establish small, small businesses at the micro level. Mm -hmm. What I have witnessed is people do not have patience. First thing. Okay. Second, they have their idols. They're inspiring somebody who is a big, big person in the community. But they do not see what hard work that person has done. Yeah, true. So they want to take a shortcut mm. and go sit in a big room and you know order, <laughs> have a laptop. Then everything is running already. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is so easy. So we need to come out of that shell. Okay. I take this also as a positive thing because whoever uh, makes you a role model, mm -hmm. because initial six months they try to you know copy from boring the funds or whatever the funds they are the sources they yeah. have. They have the same lifestyle, but when they go into the essence, the things are not coming up why what is it that they are going wrong so they explore that individual yeah, sure. and when they explore that individual it gets they get to know that's the hard work that they have to do Obviously. they had the hun lot of hit and trial if you are not able to focus on one idea in mm. the way that you thought it would practice it would do boom in the market but it doesn't happen so you can you know come up with different ideas different solutions and then Sky is the limit. Of course. The Lokya Kahenge philosophy have to be a big cross. Yes. Because I would just say COVID situation. Pre COVID, I had a restaurant uh, because I had a flair to yeah. be in you the hospitality industry. Too much flair? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we moved to a bigger location and to my faith, Alhamdulillah. Um, two and a half months. Uh, I launched and uh, COVID yeah, hit. Shut down, yeah. And this is one forecasting which you could have never done it. Obviously. So. Worst come worst. The world wasn't able to do it yet. Yes, no, it was not. absolutely. So I talk about failures. People are reluctant to talk about failures. It's failure, but I believe it was a blessing in disguise. Exactly. Because I got to know what are my key strengths, where should I be focusing more. So we got to talk about failures. We have Definitely. to stand up. Definitely. And stay focused on your things because people are always going to talk. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we have to say across to people, talk, because this is what the generation is facing at the moment, the start of businesses. Hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. wonderful. Right, definitely. And, yeah, and, and, and you know, that's what we want to continue with. But okay, yeah, Shazad, please go ahead and then uh, thank I'll you, pose my question. Uh, thank you, Shazad, for being so kind. Uh, moving on to Ms. Javeri over here. You being a business coach and then also, of course, uh, on a daily interaction with students as well. Are there some of the issues that you have personally identified that are wrong with, the, uh, you know, youngsters especially having a startup? Some of the most common issues they face. Yes, uh, definitely. Actually, I've uh, noticed that first uh, they are just just extra motivated too motivated mm -hmm. they forget to plan actually oh. yeah. and uh, when they plan then they keep on planning oh. and <laughs> once uh, other they plan or they don't plan this oh. is the one big issue i have noticed <laughs> exactly yeah. so this is one issue i really really and then they are not consistent yeah. second issue is they are not consistent they want like they want like everything in a second that mm. is not going to happen if that if this is one wonder one time wonder happened to someone mm. that is not going to be repeated with you every but it wasn't really a wonder it happened to someone because they were dedicated every they single day right. when they wake up exactly. you know they're, they're like okay yeah, you know no matter what happens yeah. i'm still going to push through push exactly. through push through it happened to only those people when it, 
say for example if you are even going viral you're not going viral just because you know there is just one in a million chance yeah. like that Definitely. but you are consistent with your strategy you are giving time you are there yourself and then you something happens for you and then they are not consistent the third problem i think is that they they are asking the right question to the wrong people. Oh. They are asking their parents. Advice. Advice. Mm. They are asking. Big job, son. What are you doing? Tell me. Just tell me. Just big job, son. Exactly. So uh, otherwise, like um, sometimes the parents are too like uh, you know they they want them to succeed. So they will stop them. Maybe they are able to do something, but they will stop them to do something. They are asking. Um, they are asking for advice from their friends. What what do uh, friends know about mm. the business themselves? Yeah. Are they doing the business themselves? <laughs> Why you are asking uh, to people right. who have no idea about business? And that's true. I want to build up on this as well because just very recently we ventured into property investments as well, me and my partner, and you know we we made a few investments, Shiza, and then uh, you know so obviously my father will always have a conversation with me because he happens to be a business guy too. Mm. You know, so I, I was like, okay, you know, we've invested in this this society and this all of that. He was he was like, okay, fine, you know, please make sure that you check everything. But just very very recently, I went up to him, you know, for for a piece of advice. I was like, you know, we're actually going to invest in an area which we think, inshallah, will be developed mm -hmm. by next five years or ten years. And mm -hmm. then he was like, why don't you do what? I mean, I'm not going to stop you. But why don't you invest in a clean area where you know that you know that your investment will be safe? So I was like, wherever you're going to go for safe investments, obviously the returns going to be way lower than where you're going to take a risk. So he was like, okay, how much amount of risk do you want to take? You know, do you want to uh, check the depth of the river with both the feet? Yeah. You know, this is something which obviously you need to kind of consider. But talking about that, I think that there is a lack in in our educational system as well, or mm -hmm. within the education sector. Imagine, so I did, uh, you know, my bachelor's with marketing majors as well and was studying business. Mm -hmm. And uh, even the master's was with marketing majors as well. Imagine that the teachers who were actually teaching me business mm -hmm. didn't have any business to themselves. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I can do the same while, while I was in my university. I mm -hmm. could read from the book and I could reproduce it in the paper. You know, what business are you teaching me? Mm -hmm. Rather, in foreign universities, what I've seen is that they will give you a realistic project you have to earn some money, make sure that that project runs, mm -hmm. and only then you're going to get a degree. Don't you think that we should actually do something like that? Yes, of course I think so. But the thing is that, okay, fine, I agree with you. Uh, but there is also another thing. Okay. that uh, do, Don't you think so that whatever we are teaching, say for example, we are actually inculcating so much uh, in, uh, for the practical uh, sense, like we are trying to come up with business plans and all that. Do they actually uh, put in their efforts now, you have been a student. Yeah. Don't mm -hmm. you think so that there is a group and one person is doing that yeah, yeah, yeah. work? Yes, of course. Yeah, and that, that person was me. <laughs> was I've been awarded scholarship like twice in my university. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I've, I've had a CGP of 3.67. Yeah. <laughs> so when they get out in the market, they have no idea. Uh, mm. Unfortunately, in one university, I, I realized that a student in the last semester had no idea about wh how to use Word. <laughs> so no. exactly oh, wow. this happened and he was crying. So now what? Yeah. So because his group mates were doing it for him. Yeah. Oh. So we also have to check that. Obviously. Uh, yeah. But Definitely. that's your but responsibility. But I think I'm going to take this moment. That's the, I, 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 look, teachers cannot check like, are you doing something fishy fishy that's in the what, group or not? That's teachers are there hey? for. You know, it, it's for the teachers who have to check whether everybody yeah. knows whatever the teacher is teaching them or not. Actually, the thing is where we are taking presentations, they yeah. are, you know, they have memorized uh, that. And uh, what we can do about that, we yeah. cannot uh, like mistrust true. them. They are students. Okay. Of course, yeah, of course. Yeah. There's only a certain extent yeah. that you can go to. You can but I think, Shazad, I don't agree with you where you said, now, if I'm speaking on behalf of this time right now, I don't agree with you where you said that universities are not putting in practical projects for that matter or, well, you know, uh, handing out some sort of experience that can actually land you into a better job. I've seen, well, maybe the best universities only. In that case, you might be right. One or two Pakistan is picking up on that part. Um, so there's hope, ladies and gentlemen. I tell you that even an education system, I have hope, <laughs> promise. So towards the end, I want Probably. both of you, uh, we have, you have definitely identified some problems. I want both of you to imagine that, okay, a youngster has started his startup. Whatever the idea, he has done it. He has invested, hmm. he's onto it. What are the things he should keep in mind to make it sustainable? Let's begin with you. And, and you know, Shiza, very quickly, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, but you know, whenever, you know, I'm talking about my own interest, you know, I never realized that the time's over actually. And you know, since, since That's you why I was also, like, you know, yeah. please take advantage of the opportunity. Wonderful. Uh, first thing, the business plan has to be intact. 
mm. because we should not be deviating from the goal that has to be achieved yeah. and that only you know what it is okay. and only you should know yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely mm. do not take advice from each and every person mm-hmm. uh, who you are taking advice matters the most exactly. criticism has to be acknowledged provided who is criticized recognized yes yes so criticism coming from probably uh, chairman of reet yes you have to see you have to yeah. look into mm-hmm. it criticism coming from chachi chachi <laughs> chacha not allowed uh, yeah. so that's very important and then you should have some flexibility in the investment proposition that you have in your business and you should have the capacity and the capability to calculate the risk yeah, yeah. risk taking is wonderful no okay. doubt but it has to be calculated, calculated yeah. I, I i agree with that i mean for everybody Brilliant. who's actually starting a business there's something and last really but the not the least sure. one thing because uh, we work in the pakistani environment so it is very very important to time manage yeah. and value time and, and work with people who value time who value exactly. time. So because important. if you do not um, filter your process today you will end up making losses in the future exactly from my end. thank you very much well, for you're saying so that smart. we obviously <laughs> we obviously do not want anybody in our offices working who does not really have any value for time as well that's one thing that's that's where you need to start from anything you want to say very quickly okay the thing is that you should go for you know your your planning shares uh, b we should be very very quick with the budgeting and there must be plan b also yeah, contingency yeah. planning is just too important in these days that's and true. people forget about that exactly. you should have some budget for like next 6 months and uh, then you should create engagement and then you should create you know interest in the product exactly. awareness go to the market Do, nobody is going to come to you yeah. make sure that you have that engagement and awareness and then the that the the thing is going to convert thank you very sure. much wonder ladies for saying it all and ladies and gentlemen every word they have said i stand by it as well because we've gone through it i've experienced it myself as well and yes in these days businesses really need to be i mean you, there need to be a special chunk which you really need to dedicate towards marketing marketing is a very major player in the market these days as well if you do not have any budget to market your product i'm sorry you know i don't think that you'll be landing anywhere else as well please use all the modern platforms which are available make sure you integrate technology and that's it you know the rest allah se dua kare aur risk dene wala allah hi hai uske alawa aur koi nahi definitely just one of the smallest things to always remember make sure to do your research before you actually venture venture into anything yeah. i think it's really easy to just listen to you know free advices or free two cents everyone gives out ladies and gentlemen we we'll did. see you tomorrow again <laughs> that's true though we'll see you tomorrow again inshallah uh, make sure to write to us uh, on our social media pages all with the name of well this morning yes and the repeat of this one you may be able to catch us five past midnight till the next time look after you Yourselves. क्या आपने बकरा ले लिया इज समथिंग यू कैन ऑलवेज टेल एस लुक आउट योर सेल्स वन टू थ्री गुड मॉर्निंग चलो